and welcome to St. George Episcopal Church in San Antonio, our Holy Eucharist Rite to Service. Our opening hymn is hymn number 664, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. service of Holy Eucharist can be found on our bulletin on our Facebook page or on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you... I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning can be found on page 741 of the prayer book. It is Psalm 106, verses 1 through 6 and 19 through 23. Page 741. Psalm 106, verses 1 through 6 and 19 through 23. Let us read it together. Hallelujah, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord or show forth all his praise? Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect, and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb and worshipped a molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot God their Savior who had done great things in Egypt, 
wonderful deeds in the land of Ham and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Yodia and I urge Sinti to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once more, Jesus spoke to the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those that who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome. I was reflecting as I was listening to uh, that wonderful uh, song that we just heard, uh, God of wonders, beyond all majesty, you are holy, the God who created everything that is and created it perfectly created it perfectly and yet something went wrong something went wrong uh, almost from in the beginning and what went wrong what went wrong was humanity's desire to be like God is what the scripture tells us to be like God, to, to usurp God's role and to claim it as our own. And through, through the history, through the history, I'm not sure what that is, just close it, just close it. Through the history, I think that was mine actually, that was my thing. <laughs> I was watching the Facebook thing, making, you know, that's what I do, make sure, and it rings. There you go. I don't know who's calling me right now, but you should know I'm busy. <laughs> At any rate, it's probably Keith Earl. <laughs> Love you, Keith. All right, uh, where was I? I was uh, talking about, uh, uh, yeah, stuff, right? Um, willful humanity. Willful humanity. A humanity that is uh, wanting to fashion, wanting to fashion God in its own image. That's what that Exodus story is all about. And that's our challenge. That's our always our human challenge that we create and want to create and want to have God fit our image and if we're not careful we can turn that in to um, we can turn that into a, a legalistic system that then protects the insiders but keeps out the outsiders. 
And I think in some level, that's the world that Jesus inhabited. That's the world, the religious world that Jesus inhabited. A world with legal systems that were so, so tight and so restricted that those who were on the outside remained on the outside and only the insiders could partake of the fruits of faith. And in this, in this parable, and in this parable, what we, what we hear about is the king who invites uh, large numbers of guests to the wedding. And those folks are too busy. They're too busy to go. Enraged, the king sends his troops, has all of those people uh, murdered, killed. Not a very good uh, thought, but it's in there. And everything was destroyed. Now, what we might want to consider is that Matthew is sort of explaining in this, in this part of the parable, he's explaining the destruction of the temple and the destruction of Jerusalem. And like in other parts of the New Testament, uh, in other parts of the Old Testament, the, the writers, the tellers of the story are connecting um, the destruction, the breakdown. They're, they're ascribing that to a lack of faith. Those who were invited to the wedding were destroyed out of a lack of faith, a lack of willingness to, to respond to the call of faith. And so the servants are then sent out into the streets and everyone is brought in. And then there's the one fellow, and this is also troubling, there's the one fellow who, who is brought in off the streets and because he has no wedding robe on, he's bound and cast out into the outer darkness. And let's think about that for a minute. If the destruction of the temple, according to Matthew, is, is in, in some way tied to a lack of carrying out of faith, might the man who is without a robe be lacking in some way, shape, or form? Some, some bit, some aspect of faith. I've often heard that faith uh, is the opposite of fear. Maybe you've heard that recently. Faith is the opposite of fear. Sometimes people say faith is the opposite of doubt. But I'm not so sure that those kinds of, of ex, explanations, definitions, you know, defining what it is by what faith is by what it's not is really helpful. And I, you know, I think in this in this parable, what we might even see is that faith has to be shown. That there has to be some evidence of faith, some evidence that that. We are actually using the faith that we have. I think maybe what we see in this parable is neglect. The people who were invited to the wedding, they neglected. They neglected their their relationship. They neglected uh, their responsibilities, their duties, as it were. They neglected to live out what was expected of them. And I think the same is true with the man who has no wedding robe. That neglecting of 
his own social responsibilities, his neglect of showing proper respect to the ones who were being married and to the one who invites, and even maybe even a neglect of himself, of getting himself ready appropriately to be at this wedding. There's some neglect there. So if faith can best be shown by evidence, if, the, if our faith can be shown by doing those things that are asked of us rather than neglecting them, what might we say is the evidence of our faith? There's probably a lot of different uh, words that we could use that would give us the categories for um, of evidence of our faith. I'm going to talk about two. The first is love. We all remember the one who asked Jesus, you know, which commandment is the greatest? And Jesus' response, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love. Love is evidence of our faith. And it starts with loving God, loving the God who created everything that is, who at a point in our world's history, at a point probably even in the, the history of our universe, at a single moment in time, created everything that is. And who has shepherded us through time. And is even now making a new creation of us. And is planning a future that we can't even begin to comprehend. Loving God. Loving God is entering into the mystery of God. Simply to be with God. Simply to be with the Lord of all creation. Simply to be with the God of wonders. The God of majesty. To be with the God who is both unknowable and known. In Christ Jesus. The God who is. Beyond our understanding. And yet. A very. A part of. The very fabric. Of our lives. The God. Who is. Changeless. And yet. Can change his mind. As we heard. In the Exodus story. And that helps us to love our neighbor and to love ourselves. Which brings me to the second word. Compassion. Compassion. To feel with. To feel with. To be with. We seem to have come to a point in our own history where we often don't see the other with compassion. We see it on the news and social media. And maybe, maybe we live it. But compassion is, is to see the other, to truly see another human being and to value that human being as a child of God. And here's what's interesting, right? So if you're a child of God, 
and I'm a child of God. And all those people out there are children of God. Then that makes us all siblings. It makes us all siblings. If you are a human being and you have your feet on this planet, you are a child of God. And you have value. And the other has value. And we see each other. Not as the other. Not as the enemy. But as a brother or sister. A child of God. And because we're all children of God. Because you're a child of God. And I'm a child of God. And they're a child of God. We will do whatever is necessary. To care for each other. And to uplift those other children of God. To stand with them. Not against them. To stand with them. And to stand with all of God's children. For every one of us is a child of God. Faith. Faith is evidenced by love, by compassion. In the book of Hebrews, in the letter to the Hebrews, we read this in chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It's a great definition. I want to add to it. Let's add to it. Let's come up with our own faith is. How about faith is loving God and loving our neighbors in active, tangible ways? How about this? Faith is tending our spiritual lives so that we might move beyond our comfort zones to show our love of God by demonstrating our love of God by loving others and by loving ourselves for this faith is to be an active partner with God wherever God desires to create a space for the kingdom to be revealed and proclaimed in loving and compassionate ways Faith is. Faith is. How would you fill out the rest of that sentence? Faith is. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Moses interceded with God for the sake of the people, so let us offer our intercessions on behalf of others, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. That we may clothe ourselves in garments befitting the faithful, compassion, joy, generosity, gladness of spirit, intentionality of lifestyle, and dedication to the way of our beloved Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the church may be a refuge for the poor and lost, the lonely and those who hunger after righteousness, revealing through fragile human beings the signs of God's glorious kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in our time, that we may not linger in our efforts to secure hope for the peoples of the world and the prosperity that peace inspires. Let us pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that we may not make idols out of the many technologies and consumer products that entice our imaginations, but use them as tools for God's mission and glory. Let us pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that the departed may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray, Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the beauty of the earth, the fruits of the sea, the rising and setting of the sun, and all the marvelous gifts of God's creation, that in our wonder we may rededicate ourselves to our stewardship of the environment, so that generations to come may enjoy such pleasure. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today, especially for those on our prayer list, Will, Robbie, Myrtle, Nan, Daryl, Carol, Thomas, Linda, Patty, Charles, Steve, Nan, Arturo, Abby, Justin, Rick, Melissa, David, Amalia, Margie, Anne, Zoe, Janie, Mike, Sandy, Gerald, Alice, Bill, Carmelina, Faye, Kevin, Efren, Father Bruce, Charlotte, Francis, Chris, Florence, Nancy, Susie, Randy and family, James, Patricia, and Charles. For our vestry and other lay leadership, our staff and clergy, for our day school head, Rob Devlin, the faculty staff and the school board, for our Bishop David Reed and the leadership of the Diocese of West Texas. We pray for our day school, for all students, faculty, and staff and their families. We pray for those who have died, for the repose of the soul of Don Beer. Pray for those who have died from COVID-19. And we pray for those who mourn for the Beer family. We pray for all who have lost loved ones during this pandemic, especially those we have lost due to COVID-19. We offer you prayers of thanksgiving for the gracious gifts in our lives, for our families, our friends, our neighbors, for the life we share in Christ, for those healed from COVID. And we give you thanks and pray for the birthdays this week. Layla Flores, David Silva, Olivia Webb, Olivia Talley, and St. Fleur Catute. 
And we pray for the eradication of systemic racism and for healing and racial reconciliation. For nurses, doctors, and others who tend to sick during this pandemic. For educational leadership as they make decisions regarding returning to school. For those who exercise their constitutional rights through protesting and those who are called to uphold the laws. For the divisions in our country to heal and justice to reign upon all of God's children. For all people to understand the grave danger in which our arrogance and sad divisions have put us. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and that use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also, also with you. Peace and hugs. <laughs> Father Ramsey, you want to announce something? Yes. <laughs> Well, good. Welcome, everyone. Um, real quick, a couple of just a quick, quick announcements. Uh, one is uh, we are continuing to work um, towards uh, getting our technology and everything in sync. We still got a ways to go, obviously, um, but uh, we're trying to. Uh, our goal is to bring this service and make it more of a hybrid service, and so we'll send some more information about that out. Uh, but we continue at 8.30 with uh, in-person worship, and then uh, we're moving towards a hybrid version of this where we'll have uh, what we're doing now along with some in-person participants. So more on that as we go. We're taking our time to do that, uh, working on the technology and just making sure that we're, we're where we need to be on all of that. Uh, also, if you noticed in the announcement scroll, uh, there is a new family formation opportunity, uh, so you can look at some information about that. Uh, some really fun stuff to, to do some uh, family things. We've got some great uh, opportunities coming up, so uh, do check your eSpear um, and pay attention to all the announcements that are coming out through there. That is our main hub, as well as the website. And I believe that is all the announcements I've got. So. Our offertory sentence is this, Jesus said, come to me all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will refresh you. Just 
the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. We continue with a great Thanksgiving, Eucharistic Prayer A, which is, if you have a prayer book in front of you, it's page 361. And before I uh, continue, I want to, to offer a prayer Yesterday was World Mental Health Day, and uh, want to make sure that we recognize that and affirm that here at St. George. If you uh, are someone who suffers, struggles with uh, some kind of mental health issue, uh, know that we are here to support you. You're not alone. Uh, there's a lot of us who have to deal with that, 
uh, myself included. And so it's, uh, it's no shame, no stigma, uh, and we support you and uh, we love you and we offer an opportunity for you to uh, engage in the spiritual practices that can ease your heart. And for those of you who are fortunate enough not to have to deal with uh, ongoing mental health issues, uh, recognize this, that this time that we are in is a, a very heavy time and you could be feeling uh, things like stress or uh, irritation or lots of different things, fatigue. Uh, all of those are, are a part of what uh, this, this time of, of heaviness, this time of trauma can bring. Uh, pay attention to your own wellness and make sure that you are uh, using the tools that you've been given, the tools that you've learned, and let us all gather together in, in, in prayer and pray for one another and show love and compassion for each other uh, during this uh, very difficult time. So let us pray. Gracious God, we, we offer our prayers for those who, who struggle with mental health issues, and we pray that you would that you would be with, with them, that you would fill them with your holy and healing spirit, that you might give them the, the resources, the therapists, counselors, psychiatrists, pharmaceuticals, support groups, all the things that are needed to be able to thrive while also having a mental, this mental illness disorder. And we offer our prayers for all of those who are struggling in, in ways that are new to them. That they're feeling the effects of, of confusion and trauma. And ask that you be with us all. To help us be supportive of one another. To love each other. We pray that you would heal us. And heal all those broken places in us, between us, and around us. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice. For the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And now, Reverend Susan is going to lead us in the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus. I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
We continue with the post-communion prayer that's on page 366, if you have a prayer book. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Render no one evil for evil. Comfort the afflicted, strengthen the faint-hearted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, keep you safe, make you strong this day and every day of your life. Amen. And uh, I wish y'all could be over here. There is a, a lizard, one of those green animals. That's it. It's over here on uh, Reverend Susan's side, and she's jumping around over here uh, every time that thing moves. It's really see. You really want to come to this service when we go hybrid, so you can. It's better than a comedy club some days. Anyway, we're gonna sing uh, hymn number five hundred and fifty-six, verses one through five. God bless y'all. See y'all.